If you have an iPad, then you probably know how awesome they are. They're incredibly powerful, yet super portable. And while they are pretty easy to use, there are some cool hidden features that can really enhance your iPad experience and boost your productivity. So here are eight hidden iPad features that you need to know. One of the benefits of an iPad versus let's say a Mac is that the iPad is a touchscreen. So there are some pretty intuitive gestures that you can use to navigate around your iPad. And so when you're in an app full screen, you probably know that you can just quickly swipe up to get back to your home screen. Or if you swipe up but hold, you can see all of your open apps. Those actions are possible because of this little white bar that's basically like a trackpad, but you can also use it to just quickly swipe between any of your open apps to just save yourself a few steps. Another option is to use four fingers on your screen to do the same thing. If the four finger swipe didn't work for you, you can head into your settings down to multitasking and gestures and make sure the four or five finger app switching is toggled on. If there are any websites that you are constantly going to, what you can do to save yourself a few steps instead of always having to go to Safari is you can actually add the website as an app on your home screen. So to set this up, what you need to do is go into Safari and go to the website that you wanna save. This is a little bit of a shameless plug, but if you didn't know, I do have Amazon storefronts set up for both Canada and the US with all of the products I'm currently using and the products that I love to keep it easy and all in one place. And I will be updating this soon before Black Friday and the holidays. So let's say this was the website that I did wanna save for easy access. What I would do is go up to the share button in the top right, and then I would hit more, and then you'll see an option to add to home screen. At the top, you have the option of renaming it, and then you can just hit the check mark, and then you'll see it's added it as an app on my home screen. So the next time I wanna go to my Amazon store, instead of going to Safari and typing in the URL, I can just come in here, click on the app, and it'll bring me right into this website. Having a home screen with a million different apps that you don't use very often can be distracting and can get pretty cluttered fairly quickly. If we head into settings and then search for newly downloaded apps, I recommend selecting that newly downloaded apps are only placed in the app library and not on your home screen. I just find it gives me a little bit more control. Once an app is downloaded, I can then choose which folder I want it to go in or if I even want it on my home screen at all. And then another thing I like to do is toggle on show app library in the dock. So then I see the app library in my dock and all of the recently downloaded apps will be visible here so that they're easier to find and I can just click to get into the full app library. If though you don't want your app library in your dock, you can always get to the app library by just swiping over from your home screen and then you'll see your recently added apps in the top left. And then if you wanted to, you could click and hold to drag any of your apps onto your home screen or place it in the appropriate folder. Another really handy thing to know is when you're in an app in full screen and you wanna to get to your dock, to save yourself a few steps, what you can do is just quickly swipe up to see your dock and then go into whatever app you're looking for. And I find this especially handy because I've added my downloads folder to my dock. So if I'm working in notes and let's say I've downloaded a photo that I wanna add into my notes, I can now just quickly click on the file and drag it into my notes without actually having to leave the notes app to go to the file app, find the photo and drag it in. And the ability to add folders to your dock is new in iPadOS 26. So if you wanna learn how to do that and see some of the other new features in iPadOS 26, I'll link that video down below. This next one used to be one of my biggest pain points on my iPad because it was a feature I could do so easily on my Mac and could never figure out how to do on my iPad. And that's the ability to have two windows of the same app open at the same time. So what I mean by this, is let's say we go into Safari. I could of course always just open a new tab and then tap between two tabs. But sometimes I wanna actually be able to see both tabs open at the same time. So what you would do is go to the app. So let's say Safari and long press, and then you'll see the option to open a new window. 
and then you can click on that and then go to the second website as normal. And then what you'll see when you go into your app switcher is you now have two Safari apps or tabs open, which means I can go into one of my Safari pages and flick it over to the side and then find the other one and do the same. Now you unfortunately don't have the option to do this in every app. For example, Amazon, there's no option to do it, but you do have the option in notes, which I use all the time to open a new window. And I find this incredibly helpful if I wanna reference an older note and write a new one at the same time. Another benefit of using an iPad is the ability to use an Apple Pencil. And there are some hidden features with this as well. But don't worry, even if you don't have an Apple Pencil, there is a way to do these with your finger and I'll show you how to do both. When you wanna take a screenshot, instead of breaking your focus and awkwardly trying to press both buttons at the same time to take the screenshot, the fastest way to do it with your Apple Pencil is drag up from the left side of your screen or the same thing with my finger up from the left side of the screen and I've taken a screenshot. I'll show you how to set that up in a second if it's not working for you, but that's the bottom left hand side of my screen. On the bottom right hand side of my screen, if I use my Apple Pencil and swipe up, I can start a quick note, which I find incredibly useful if I'm typing out a script and suddenly get an idea for a new video, I can just quickly write it down with my Apple Pencil or click in to use the keyboard. And the great thing is, if I just swipe down, the quick note will stay here in case I do want to add anything else. And you can just click on that little handle to open it back up. But then once you press the check mark, if you go over to your table of contents here for your notes, you'll see a new section at the top with all of your quick notes, but you'll also just see it in all of your notes at the very top if it was the last note you edited. And same thing, if I don't have an Apple Pencil, I can just use my finger to create a quick note the exact same way. So to set this up for the Apple Pencil first, if you go into your settings and over to Apple Pencil, you can scroll down to Pencil Gestures at the bottom and you can select bottom left corner, bottom right corner, whether it's screenshot, quick note, or turn it completely off. To be able to do that, with your finger, you would go over to multitasking and gestures, and again, scroll down towards the bottom, and then you'll be able to turn on swipe finger from corner, and again, select screenshot or quick note. And here's a quick little bonus tip, but this one is Apple Pencil only. So let's say you're in a meeting or you're in class, but you're not currently using your iPad. The screen is dark, but you get an idea that you really quickly wanna jot down. Using your Apple Pencil, you can just hold it on the screen to open another quick note. And if like me, you cannot draw a perfect shape like a circle to save your life, well, the good news is your iPad can do it for you. So if I were to go to draw a circle with my Apple Pencil or even with my finger, my circles aren't great. So what I can do is long press on my circle and then head on over to this arrow in the menu to open this menu and then you'll see snap to shapes. So I can click that and it's kind of turned my circle into a perfect circle and my what was supposed to be a circle actually into a perfect oval. But an even faster way to do this is after drawing my shape to just hold my pencil down. So if I go to draw a triangle, I hold my pencil down and it's snapped to shape automatically. So those were eight handy but less obvious iPad features that I think you should know. If there are any others that you use, let me know down in the comments. And that's it, so have a great day. Bye.